Hi, sunshine. It's week 15, and I didn't quite wait until the very last minute this time, but we're probably talking, you know, last five minutes or so. Again, I'm not sure why this whole story thing is causing me so much stress, but it totally is. I guess if I'm honest with you <laughs> and myself, it's probably because I don't want to be judged, which I know is kind of an odd fear for someone who's talking about her life on the internet, but you know, what can I say? I don't want to hurt anybody either, and I don't want to misrepresent anything. So that said, I will reiterate once again that everything I'm talking about here is from my own point of view and my own memories. Anyone else involved, and I really am trying to keep it mostly just to me and my dad, will have their own memories, thoughts, and feelings on <laughs> the subject. And, you know, they can share those if they want, but this is my story. Now that that's out of the way, let's continue. So, I was just about to enter college when I stopped the last time. Something I didn't mention, but I'm guessing a lot of older siblings have probably gone through this too. To a certain extent, I still am. One who had to kind of push for all the privileges. The word harp. She said I would harp on things. Google says is to talk or write tediously on a subject. The drawback to that turned out to be that I was the one who got blamed for everything. At least these things coming up. My dad bought me my first car in exchange for commuting to college. I went to BU and we lived pretty near miles wise, of course, you know, Boston traffic. It would take a while in the morning, but we were pretty close. So that was fine with me. I actually didn't want to live in a dorm and I did want to continue working. During college, both my parents had restaurants, so I wanted to keep working and making money. Downside of the car was that for literally 10 years, and really it's actually longer than that, he would bring up that I forced him to buy me a car, and it's my fault he had to pay for cars for me and for my brother, who by the way didn't commute to school, but again, little brother. Things are always easier in that way. They don't have to push as hard. Sorry, if if that's untrue, please, younger siblings, let me know. To be perfectly honest, I'm sure I did try to push slash guilt slash encourage slash finagle uh, him into giving me a car. We came from a pretty nice area, and at the time there were a lot of kids in my class getting cars for like their birthdays and things junior and senior year of high school and it didn't seem like that big of an ask. That said, it seemed to me at the time and more so now that there was always a price to my dad's love or rather instead of just wanting to give his family everything he didn't have. He wanted his family to have everything he didn't have, but he expected some form of payment. And for me, what he seemed to want was obedience and genuflection. He was actually still bringing up the car thing within like the last two years. That's 25 years of being upset he bought this car. It didn't matter how many times I thanked him for buying the car or apologized for, I'm going to say, quote, forcing him to buy the car. It was just never enough. Like I never had enough contrition or enough gratitude. And this will kind of be a theme. I'm going to try and speed run through a lot of this because like I said, it's a theme and you know, it's not the most fun to poke at. So I worked full time my whole way through college and I graduated with honors. 
a semester early, I might add, so saving that semester of uh, college tuition. But at my graduation, he asked me why I couldn't be more like the valedictorian of my college within the overall college of BU. And when I was writing this up, I wrote this long and involved paragraph about how she and I were different people and blah, 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 which we really were. Like, I I didn't spend a lot of time with her, but I knew her because it was a really small college. And we had zero in common. That's just, that's kind of what I realized. Like, I wasn't more like her. I couldn't be more like her because we have very different views on the world and we had very different things we wanted. There was always that, why couldn't you be better? If you were something else, you would be better. That was not really fun on graduation day. When I wanted to take an internship with Disney, so basically do the internship during that kind of free semester that I had, it was a dream job because, I mean, Disney and interning in college just seemed perfect. But he called me a selfish B word for, quote unquote, abandoning him and the business. It was, we fought a lot about it before I was able to go. In a way, he actually got his wish, though, because... A little less than halfway through, I got a late night call that my aunt had been rushed into surgery for a heart transplant, and they were kind of worried about if she was going to make it, if how long that would be. I went to my bosses at Disney and said, you know, I had this family emergency, and they let me out of my contract so I could go home. Now, because I came home from Disney early... I was able to spend Easter with him and my great aunt. I don't think staying would have netted me much more, but by going home, my aunt actually lived way longer than anybody thought she was going to. So yeah, I'm, I'm really glad I went home that it meant a lot to her and to him. And I really appreciate that because I love that every horrible thing. I'm going to summarize. Over the next 10 years or so, I allowed myself to take the business, clients, my family's expectations so seriously that I ended up in an abusive relationship, which I didn't realize was abusive because I was treated way worse at work, sort of. It's complicated. I passed out from exhaustion not once but twice. I worked a 26-hour shift with only a 15 to maybe 30 minute break at like four in the morning where I was napping on the ground outside in like 30 degree weather and I ended up with such a high fever one time that I was ignoring because I thought I needed to work And when I finally went to the doctors, they were like, um, you know, you could die if you (laughs) had waited any longer to come into the emergency room. And even then, my dad wanted me back to work like the next day or the day after that. So, but for once that time, I actually refused because I didn't think I could do it like physically. I didn't think I could get there. So those were, let's say, the lowlights of my career. My father and I were constantly locked in battle. Give him half the business. Reasons, but the things I remember most is he didn't want to allow me to make any decisions about the business or like really listen to my input, even though supposedly this was a business I was going to take over, you know, whose son finally said he wanted to be part of the family business. So I don't know that I'm sure that's a a big thing. And my dad ostensibly always wanted things to be even though they definitely weren't many times, probably in both directions. So 
I'm not saying like, oh my God, my brother had everything and I had nothing. Like, I'm sure there were times I got more and times that he did. But since the business was used as like kind of a cudgel for a while, it was annoying to be like, oh, wait, no, now your brother's getting this oh, too. My dad conveniently forgot were mine and took credit for. So I didn't actually make anything from like I got no commission on these ideas and yet brought in the business a lot of money I was constantly being told well you're not doing enough what you finally did it was my dad saying that you know I just didn't care enough for the business like I wasn't doing enough or showing enough no thanks I'm done so I took a leave of absence and then decided that I wouldn't be going back. And my dad pretty much wrote me off like from that day. He just, what I heard later was that he just was like, all right, well, she's fired and she doesn't get anything. So I was like, okay, so 15 plus years of work and nothing. Okay. So, you know, he did make sure to tell me I was a terrible daughter and lazy and a waste and ungrateful. And I mean, I don't know what to say about that. It was my fault, for lack of a better word. And that is that I never really set boundaries. I pretty much was like, whatever I need to do, I'll do. And, you know, when that was more and more and more as the business got bigger and succeeded and everything else, I think it caused a problem because if I had actually negotiated some terms early on and then stuck to my guns, I think it would have been easier. But instead, I tried to you know, negotiate terms after I had been there for so long doing whatever he wanted. So at that point, he's like, well, I was getting all of that work for free. So like, why do I have to pay for it now? I think was kind of his thought, which, you know, I sort of guess. To me, it's a little like politics. Our rights get stripped away and it's really hard to get the government to give them back once that happens. Uh, hashtag vote. I think it was the same for him, saying I no longer work seven days a week or do some other whatever crazy thing. I think I worked three parties at one time once, which is a weird story, but, you know, whatever. All sorts of different stuff. But I think after having done it, then trying to say like, hey, I don't want to do this. And also I kind of want a percentage of all that money that I'm bringing in that's like, you know, counted against nobody pretty much. It's probably a tough pill to swallow if you've never had to do that before. And I will give my dad some kind of credit for the fact that when I'm most depressed, like clinically depressed, I tend toward anger very quickly. So I could be really, really difficult to work with. I felt justified at the time, but as, you know, more of an adult now, I see that it really wasn't justified. Leave the video on a bit of a positive note, which is, it's kind of positive, but maybe a little melancholy. My dad called me a couple of days before my birthday this year, 2022, to say happy birthday. And that in case he forgets, because, you know, his mind has been a little foggy, he wanted to say 
he was thinking of me on my birth minute, which was always a thing for us because apparently I was born at 8.23 p.m. and the nurse came in late. So he said, you know, she was born at 8.23 and the nurse looks up and it's 8.25 and she's like 8.25 and he's like 8.23. So he always like, it's like he wanted me to know, like, no, 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 no. I was there. I know the time. So it's been a thing for us for years. And yeah, so he called and he actually did remember to call that day. If you want a bit of a head start, you can spend this week coming up with your own story. Like, what are the kind of important things that happened to you growing up that maybe you're noticing a reoccurring themes in your life. Think about it and let me know what's going on with you in the comments. Until then, send out more love than hate. Hug a hypoallergenic puppy and live, laugh, and shine. Bye.